Hi, my name's Kingsley from Icicle Mountaineering. Um, today I'm going to talk about the choice of boots. We get a lot of inquiries from people who are heading into the mountains who get a little bit confused when they go into shops um, trying to work out what kind of footwear is going to be the most suitable for them. Most shops operate with a system of B2, B1, B3 um, that seems to fit quite well with the C1, C2, C3 of the crampon fittings. If that doesn't mean anything to you, that's exactly what this talks about. So most people when they go walking might start off with a walking shoe or a walking boot. This quite often, um, like just about any footwear, absolutely suitable for the UK hills, especially in the sort of two, three seasons. Um, what defines it as a walking boot is it is bendy. Um, it will flex and laterally, you've got a fair bit of torque in it um, so that it can sort of be responsive to the terrain. Um, you'll see that there's no notch at the front or notch on the back for any kind of crampon clip or bail. Uh, but a crampon and a flexible crampon could be fitted to it as it can be to just about any any kind of shoe. Um, so something like this as a walking crampon or even as a lightweight ski touring crampon has got a flexible bar in the middle and can adapt to a flexible boot. Um, you'll find if you were to use that in snow or on ice um, there's too much give in it. There's no insulation built into an almost a walking shoe or a walking boot. Um, and so whilst it will get you over a steep section, it won't be uh, give you enough so rigidity and enough security on steep ground. Um, so for most of the time, if you're looking at wearing a crampon, you're looking at what's categorised as a B2 or a B3 boot. Uh, this is an example of a, a sort of famous or infamous uh, B2 boot, the Sportiva Trango series. Um, tends to be uh, what defines it is so different from the other one. You'll see there's a little bit less flex in it. There is some flex in that sole. I can just about sort of do it with my, um, just with my hand stretch. You'll find a slightly more sort of precise um, sole unit. You can see the sort of climbing zone uh, on this sort of Vibram sole here. Um, and the other sort of feature on the boot, you'll notice there's a notch at the back that a crampon clip can, can fit into. Um, so for a pneumatic crampon clip, um, the, there's no sort of toe bell, but a sort of plastic, plastic sort of toe guard, and then the heel clip will sort of fit on that one. The Trango series has evolved over time. Um, so now um, this is one of the sort of more updated models. Um, and again, you'll see no um, sort of notch on the front, have got the uh, section on the back. As far as what this would be ideal for if it was fitted to a 12 point crampon, some of the lower Alpine 4000 meter peaks, things like Gran Paradiso, um, or some of the more technical but non snowy um, 4000 meter peaks. So Matterhorns by the Hornley or uh, the Line Italian Ridge, uh, the Mitteleggi Ridge on the Eiger. Um, a lot of the peaks in the Oberland um, or Sass, uh, where there's a mixed ground. You'll notice from the actual boot, there's not much sort of built-in insulation on them, so they can get a little bit cold, but they're very, very precise. A good sort of climbing sole on it, and again, the sort of climbing, climbing zone on there um, for sort of decent edging on it. So a very precise, so sort of quite technical boot, um, a B2, um, but you'll find relatively low on the ankle. It's not a sort of high ankle, um, but it can be relatively versatile, um, but just a little bit on the chilly side. If you're going to go on to snow climbs, so we're looking at Scottish winter, we're looking at Alpine uh, snow climbs, essentially not, not very technical snow climbs, um, so something like Mont Blanc, um, you might be looking at something like this. So this is a B3 boot, and what defines the B2, B difference between the B2 and the B3, the B2 quite often has a shank or a stiff bit built into the sole, either metal or plastic. The B3 tends to be even more rigid. There's hardly any flex, if any at all, there on the B3 boot, and laterally very little sort of twisting or turning at all. So it's going to put very little stress or strain on a crampon. It's going to give it a very firm base that a crampon can be attached to. You'll notice on this one, the heel clip at the back, um, no bail uh, bar at the front. So this is going to need a plastic toe bail to fit over the front. Um, so something, for example, like these uh, black diamond saber tooth crampons in that the boot will fit very so neatly into that plastic toe guard, uh, toe bail at the front. And then the heel clip will fit on the, on the back uh, section here. It's a lot more chunky boot. You'll see that there's a round or this a protective zone built around the edge. Um, it's going to take a little bit more um, abuse if you're going through very sort of broken, rocky, periglacial terrain with a lot of loose talus and uh, boulders. It's going to give your toes a little bit more protection. Um, but this is a very good all-round uh, alpine boot for the big snow climbs. Um, so the Doms, the Doofus Bits, the uh, Mont Blancs uh, and the likes. This is a, it's a great B3 boot. Um, the kind of what became the kind of industry standard for B3 boots are these, the Sportiva Nepal Extremes. 
um, the big yellow monsters, very much the kind of Land Rover Defender of big boots. Almost impossible to bend them at all. They have got a slight sort of rocker in the sole unit. The difference here is that they've got a little uh, so sort of groove at the front, so it can take a metal uh, sort of toe bail, as well as the clip on the back to allow the heel toe bail. It'll also take um, the plastic toe bail, exactly the same as I showed on the Sabretooth. You can put any cramp on, whatever grade, so a, a, a C1, C2 or C3 on a B3 boot. Um, it'll accept absolutely anything. What you'll find if you were to go for a softer boot, so a B2 or a B1, if you were to use stiffer crampons, it's going to put a lot more metal fatigue on that sort of lower midsection of a crampon. So if you were to, for example, on a, as an extreme example, put a pair of saber tooth crampons on a pair of trainers, that middle toe bail, or sorry, the middle bar in the crampon uh, that joins the sort of front toe section and the heel section, is going to be put under a huge amount of strain and potentially could fracture. So that's why the boot in combination with a decent crampon um, that sort of match each other well um, is essential. Um, so the B3 boots like this one, it's insulate lining, a lot of insulation, a massive surround sort of section right the way around the, the boot to give it a huge amount of protection, very solid toe section so if any rocks fall on your foot you've got quite a, a high degree of protection there and these are good for high altitude um, climbs, certainly everything in Europe, um, going up to um, climbs such as Elbrus, even Aconcagua if it's not too cold, um, but big, big snowy climbs. Um, Scottish winter, absolutely perfect, where it's cold, maybe not so high, but certainly very cold. So those are the kind of three kind of boots. If you, just in summary, if you're, um, for example, going to Scotland and it's slightly warmer or not so snowy, a B2 for winter walking and easy grey gullies can be fine. If you're into deep snow, you'll You'll find that the B3 boot is that little bit higher, gives your ankle that little bit more support um, and has the insulation lining on it. So a big alpine snow climb, for example, the B3 boot would be great. If you're on a sort of more technical alpine climb, slightly more rocky, things like Matorn and Igers, the B2 tends to be absolutely perfect. So those are the choices. Try not to get too confused by uh, how the retailers try and categorise things. Um, take in any kit that you've existing, any existing kit you've got. So, for example, if you have a pair of crampons, take that in and see what kind of boots can be fitted to it and vice versa. Hope that helps. There's more information on the website uh, and you can visit www.icicle.co.uk. Thanks for listening. Bye now.